Hello, hello. I don't know if anybody's there because Facebook Live's got a new format, which I worked out since last week. But they still don't show me if and when somebody has logged on. So let me know that you're there. Charles Anderson, you're there. Hello, sir. Okay, good. I'm glad to see that I am, in fact, streaming over a thing as well in South Africa, my friend. Um, hmm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And this is my first time using the, the uh, automated setup uh, on, uh, on this thing. Hey, Douglas, good to see you, man. Um, so if you'll, if, you'll, if, if you'll forgive me if I'm trying to figure out the, the slightly new technical side of it, nothing too big. Uh, I hope that you can hear me. I did some work on that since, uh, since last Friday, so hopefully you can hear me a little better. I'm also looking forward today to over here, <laughs> so hopefully that'll be better too. Um, I, I don't know. Can you guys? Yeah, never mind. We'll figure it out as we go. So um, tonight's topic, muffling drums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Reggie, how you doing, brother man? Good to see you. Oh, man. Oh, okay. I got to not hit things when I've got this talk back turned on. It gets really loud. I'm going to give it another you know, 30, 45 seconds or so and just see we grab a couple more folks. Um, I'm not sure who all is going to be joining us in the meantime. That's right. Yeah. Uh huh. Did you see? <laughs> did you guys see the video of the dude saying that we were all, you know, evil because we we play backbeat? You can check that out. It's on my it's on my profile. Uh, it's hysterical. Brazil, JP Lima, good to see you, man. Uh, I don't speak Portuguese. I need to learn Portuguese. My my goal for the end of quarantine is to become fluent in Spanish. I don't know if I'm going to make fluency, but hopefully I'll get, you know, at least further than I am, and, and Portuguese would be a very good next one, don't you think? Um, I guess we'll find that out, won't we? So, uh, just let's just see. Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, yeah, not a problem, Reggie. Um, okay, so you can hear me. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Ah, thank you. This is, I, I, this is actually from 1996. JP likes my t-shirt. This is from 1996. I saw the tour of Vinnie Pagliuta, of course, the great Vinnie on drums. David Sanctius was playing keys. Uh, who was playing guitar? I'm Dominic Miller, of course. So it was, it was the band, you know, doing their thing. Uh, it, was, it was one of the best shows I've been to really ever. It was killer. Great show, great show. And I had not seen this shirt in forever, and I asked my wife this morning, hey, do you know where the Sting shirt is? And I've got one other one that I'm going to pull out, too. And she said, yeah, I think it's in the bottom of that thing over there. So here we go. Um, anyway, so cool. Uh, so let's start chatting a little bit. It seems that we've got a quorum now. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. I know we've got a, a, got the virus kicking back up. Yay. Uh, but I hope that, that you're all staying safe. We're doing our best. We ventured out this weekend and took a little drive. We were masked up, gloved up, T-shirt. We were, we were you know, hand sanitizered up everything that we could do, and, and uh, we just drove up to, to uh, this little Dutch village and had a quick bite to eat outside, and the, they were very social distanced, and we drove back. It was actually nice just to get out. Uh, but anyway, I hope everybody else is doing okay, too. Um, so tonight's discussion topic begins with this, drum muffling. What is it? How do we do it? Why do we do it? Is it necessary? What are some ways to do it? And what is this whole idea of drum dampening? So let me start there. This is a bit of a pet peeve of mine. It drives me crazy. I will absolutely tell people that's not the right word <laughs> because I'm that guy. Uh, drum dampening does not exist. Unless you pour water on your drums, you are not dampening your drums. Dampen to dampen means to make wet, to make moist. We're not doing that to our drums. We are damping, not in, not dampening, just damping, which is to, to dampen, to damp, to damp, is to take away specific overtones or frequency vibration. In this case, <laughs> hey, Janet, <laughs> uh, in this specific case, it's great that you did that. In this specific case, um, we are talking about the vibration of drum heads and what they do to microphones and what they do to an audience and what they do to your ears, our ears as drummers. One of the things that, that people get really confused about 
muffling versus dampen. So remember, dampen, not dampen me. Not, not pouring water on our drums. Dampen. Oh, I dropped the stick. I picked up the stick. So those, those of us that work in the studios almost exclusively like I do, um, I don't use much muffling, damping of any kind ever. It's incredibly rare for me to use anything on my drums. Uh, until three months ago, I didn't have anything in my kick drum either. Nothing. So uh, my drums were wide open and screaming. Now, why was that? Because I spend a lot of time tuning my drums. I want my drums to sound good as drums. So I use coated ambassadors for my batter heads almost all the time. Not, not all the time, but most of the time. Remote coated ambassadors on the tops. Uh, this one actually has a vintage, uh, what is this? Yeah, this one actually has a vintage emperor on it. Uh, I wanted something very specific out of the 16. We'll, we can talk about that in a minute. Uh, but the rest of the drums are all coated ambassadors. This is a coated vintage emperor on this 8x14 brass drum because I wanted a thicker head on here. So my point in this is the way that I handle weird overtones and ring and whatnot is to tune the drums well. A well-tuned drum doesn't need muffling, doesn't need damping. So let's talk about that difference. What is muffling? What is damping? What's the difference? To muffle is to re reduce the volume. A muffler on your car makes the engine sound quieter, right? A muffler it on a drum is to make it quieter. Essentially, it's so that your roommate or your girlfriend or your wife or your boyfriend or your whatever, your dog, doesn't hate you. That's what muffling is about. Or sometimes in a band situation, you might want to muffle the drums so that they're not killing everybody. Say you're rehearsing in a small space. Um, and muffling can be useful, but it's, un, it's, an unlikely, it's, it's unlikely that you'll do very much muffling outside of a practice situation. And yes, I'm being very specific and playing semantics with the terminology, but that's on purpose. We need to know the difference so that when we start talking to other players, we start talking to producers, we start talking to engineers, we can have that conversation in an intelligent way, right? So ultimately, what we typically are trying to do when we're getting rid of overtones is damp the drums. We're trying to damp an overtone. And again, while I'm a believer in tuning the, the, the drums well and getting rid of overtones that way, I will acknowledge begrudgingly, because if you know me at all, you know I can't stand this. I hate to put, to put anything on my toms. I hate it. But occasionally, there's a moment. So what, I, what I'll do now, like I've got these nifty little Remo crown control gels. They're, they're very similar to you know moon gels and other things, uh, but Remo's now doing their own version. They're, they're really kind of neat, because they are the Remo crown. I doubt you can see that from from there. I'm trying a new camera angle tonight, by the way. I hope you guys liked it. Um, anyway, yeah, my wife saw me leaning. She's like, yeah, you're not doing that ever again. So anyway, these little these little gel dealios. This is the Remo Crown Gel. Here, get off me. Um, a simple piece of this. Tear it in half, tear it in a quarter, place it on your drum, and you've got a difference. So let's take a listen to it. Here's the wide open drum. Sorry, I didn't realize I had the effect on. Let's try that without the effect. That's a well-tuned drum. Sounds good. What happens if I do this? That was interesting, wasn't it? What did you hear? Somebody tell me what you heard. This versus this. from this side of the kit. What are you hearing from that side of the kit? Uh, by the way, I've discovered there's about a 20 second delay from when I do something to when you actually see it. So, Also, I'm going to show you this. Since we just did that experiment, I'm going to move it out to the edge, a little further to the edge. Watch this. So here we go. Uh, by itself. Well tuned. Where it was before. 
I'm going to move it out to the edge, right, just barely touching the edge of the head. What about a little different piece of it, slightly further in? What are you hearing? It seems as though the pitch has gone down, right? Guess what? The pitch hasn't gone anywhere. What you've done is gotten rid of overtones. Under a microphone, is that a bad thing? I don't know. I don't know if it's bad or good. I know that it's different. And sometimes you don't necessarily want that. You want that. However, if your objective is to try to get the drum quieter, say, say for instance, you think it's too ringy. One of the things that happens is that once you are in front of the kit, the ring basically disappears. Oh my gosh, if you happen to have guitars strumming around you, are you kidding me? If there are guitars strumming, man, forget it. All of this ringing and overtone disappears. Cymbal ring and swells and crashes. All of that stuff gets absorbed because there's only so much frequency. And the frequencies start to clash and things disappear. So you only end up with a very pure tone. I'm going to do something here. There we go. So yes, the pitch dropping, etc. So what you're actually hearing, though, it's for some reason the computer was not scrolling. My apologies. So yes, having that, having this on the drum, it's not actually dropping the pitch. It's an illusion. It's an aural illusion. What it's doing is getting rid of the upper overtones, which gives you the thought, your ears, the thought that it has in fact dropped the pitch. It's the same with a two ply head. You think that a two ply head is easier to tune lower. When in reality, a single ply head can be tuned lower, but a two ply head, this emperor over here, is a little more dead. So it gets rid of some of those higher edged overtones, which gives the illusion of it being lower pitched. Now, what difference does it make? None whatsoever. If that's the sound you want, great. But this is a big part of it. Sometimes guys will muffle the drums with these things. And again, this, I just kind of despise this. Um, but, you know, we're doing, this, we're doing something here. So I'm going to put them on my toms. I'm going to show you guys. And I'm putting them all in about the same place, right about the Remo logo. Now, it sounds nice and full and fat, right? I mean, that, that's, that's, this is a great drum set to begin with, and it sounds great all the time. So when I throw these on here, the heads don't respond nearly as quickly. So it actually becomes more difficult for me to play it to get these quick figures. Those quick figures are more challenging because the head is not reacting the way that I'm expecting it to react. So you are actually working against your own playing sometimes if you're trying to do certain things. And, and bear in mind, I, this is not hard and fast rules. These are my observations of being a studio drummer for the past 10 years, okay? So take this information and do with it as you will. I, I totally understand. Um, but let me show you this. Now, I'm going I'm to pull the black thingy here, the Remo crown muffle, Remo crown muffle off the 10. And we're going to... I'm going to show you guys something, and this is controversial. Uh, no, I do not wish to have a trial of this. Thank you. All right, so this is a decibel meter right here, and uh, I don't know if you can see it. I think you probably can. So we're going to, I'm going to swipe at this 10, and we're going to see what the ultimate peak volume is. You ready? Really sorry about that. Let me take my foot off the pedal. All right, so the peak was 113.8. That's what that number over here is, 113.8. That's pretty loud. That, that's not quite jet engine, but it's pretty loud. Yeah, still. So uh, it's averaging at about 100. So let's, let's take a look. Will it drop the volume if I add this to it? What do you think? Not at all. Not even a little bit. It was. It went from. Uh, let me just say it. Yeah, it's, it's showing at about 111 
So it dropped it two decibels, maybe. How about this? Yeah, 110.5. So it's not dropping the volume level at all. Hence, we are not muffling the drum. We are only damping the drum. So what happens if I try this trick? Where on the snare drum, this is a wide open snare drum. So here I have a remote diplomat clear. I'm going to put it upside down on the drum. Just for the sake of clarity. Now with the upside down hip. Why is not scrolling? Uh, so, by putting this on, am I losing any volume? Let's find out. All right, so here's my decibel meter. Oh my gosh, I don't want to rate your app. Ugh, I want to use your app. Here we go. Sorry. All right, that one's coming in at about 115 with a peak at 120, which is, in fact, jet engine line. So let's try it with the diplomat on top. 114. It's exactly the same. So again, have I muffled the drum? By definition, no. I haven't. Uh, muffling, again, is about one thing, and that's lowering the volume. Damping, on the other hand, is about controlling the sound. And in fact, that's what word you'll get from people. I want the sound to be more controlled, so I throw my things on here. Right, Chris, that's exactly right. It, it's, it's not in any way muffled, it's just damped. So, a lot of times you'll hear people throw these things on and say, I'm muffling my drums, you know, I don't want to be too loud. Well, you're not doing anybody any good by doing that. All you're doing is changing the sound of the drum. You're not lowering the sound of the drum. And that's the ultimate lesson here. Muffling a drum is much more difficult than damping a drum. Uh, I, I typically don't use anything on any of my drums, as I've said. I do like this little thingy quite a lot. Um, it's a snare weight. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Um, uh, this was given to me several years ago. And I went, okay, I tossed it in my bag, and I never looked at it again. Because I'm not interested in muffling stuff and damping stuff. I'm not interested. So I'm like, what is this thing? One day, it's really heavy, by the way. I bet it, it probably weighs close to a pound. It's got this little leather insert that's magnetic, and you can replace those and change them out. So one day I pulled it out, and I was like, well, what is this thing? What does it do? So I found it really interesting. Here's my snare drum again. Now with the snare drum, and it just magnetically attaches to the hoop. To the hoop. say guys, I'm also referring to any of you women that may be in the crowd. Uh, it is a colloquialism. What do you guys hear there, though? Let me, uh, let me tell you what I hear from this side. It's not so much that, the, that it's damped very much at all. In fact, I, it doesn't really damp anything as far as I can tell. What it does is acts like a natural compressor. That weight pushes down on the head a little bit, and the loud notes are not quite as loud, and the ghost notes are just slightly amplified in a really positive way. Take a listen to that. I'm going to play, I'm going to try to play the same thing I just played without it. Now with it. And quite frankly, 
frankly, it feels good on the drum. And that was, that's actually why I found myself using it, because it just feels kind of good. And so you know, he's, Matt over at Zero started sending me some different pieces, and this is another one of his, I think he calls it the 70s or something like that. Um, but this one, you know, throw this guy on here, and suddenly we get into some pretty serious damping. Um, and this one attaches with a clip. Now we get into some pretty serious stuff. Uh, it's actually kind of cool, though, because you can fold it back. It's currently folded back, so you can hear it. This is drum, no, no, no uh, snare weight of any kind. All right, now I'm going to flop it down, and here it is with that. solid brass snare weight to it. So it's just a nifty little device. Now, why am I showing you this? Because none of this is necessary. This is about making sonic choices that are right for a gig, right for a session, right for a situation. For instance, my man made Ernie Sheasley. He's all the time trying to get me to do this. Ernie, this is for you. Don't tell me, don't tell my wife. I stole her makeup towels. So I'm just using the mics here just to hold it, hold these guys on. But sometimes you need a slightly different sound. Now this, again, don't tell my wife is a radically different situation. I'm only doing this for one reason. And yes, I'm using the mics to hold everything on the drums. Um, I'm only going to do this for one reason. Because it's, it's, it creates a really interesting effect. This not only damps the drums, this actually muffles them. Obviously, you couldn't use that constantly. There's this, this is a DW cleaning towel. Um, it's actually really great <laughs> for this purpose on the snare drum. Stroke heads and L80 built in symbols, the holy one built in quiet. L80 
they're 80% quieter by design than live cymbals like I've got here. Sorry, my, my vocal thing dropped off. Ah, there it is. Okay, got it back. Uh, I, I don't know what where I left off. So Chris was telling me that he had just had a, you know, during the quarantine, he had to be a good roommate. So he went to Silent Stroke Heads, which I thought I had here, uh, but I neglected to pull them out. They're over in the closet, uh, which are mesh heads. If you've seen V drums, and you've essentially seen something very similar. V drum head is also a Remo head, uh, but the Remo Silent Strokes are mesh, and they don't make any real sound. They still feel like you're playing drums, which is good. And he has L80s, Zildjian cymbals. The L80s are 80% quieter than standard live cymbals like I'm playing here. Holes in them, concentric circles, not actually concentric circles. I think they're Fibonacci, if I remember correctly. Uh, they're in a Fibonacci sequence. Uh, but anyway, they're 80% quieter, and that's the way that you muffle a drum: is you put towels on them if you need to. You get the right gear: silent stroke heads and LED symbols. I think a set of LEDs is not terribly expensive—$350. I'm not trying to dismiss that cost, but it, it's not terrible, you know. You can, you can get them for, for what you need if, you're, if you find yourself in that sort of situation. You've also got this possibility, practice pad, my, my trusty e-pad that's with me all the time. Thank you again, Ed, Ed, Ed Evelyn. Guys, if you are looking for a practice pad that's going to work you out, here it is. Um, you can do things like this where you've got the practice pad on the snare drum and suddenly... no sound out of the snare. Feels nice though. Um, and it's a vichy pad which helps which really makes you work for things. Um, sorry about the terrible bass drum playing there. Nevertheless, this is the way that you do it. If you're trying to muffle the drums, you have to make radical changes. Even if you stuff them full of foam and stuff them full of cotton balls, somebody in it we were talking about it the other day. Uh, I joked that I was going to do that tonight, but it, I didn't really want to take my heads off. It doesn't really matter what you do because the attack of the drum that initial hit, that's what annoys people typically. It's not really the resonating tone because the, it goes Bum! like that and the, the tone it, it hits hard. It's that attack moment. Well, guess what? If you muffle a drum or, or if you damp a drum rather, all you get is the attack. That's it. And that's the loudest part. That's the most annoying part. I remember very clearly living in apartments and driving my neighbors out of their minds, even though I had rubber pads and everything else in the world on the, on the drums. You know, all this attack, 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 all they could hear was the attack. So bear that in mind that what you're trying to do is reduce the attack. You could use the little Vic Burr rubber tips on your sticks. Use that. That lessens the attack sound. So that's your goal. Drop the attack. Silent stroke hits, LED symbols, rubber tips, all of that stuff. Renee, yeah, hey, Renee, it's good to see you, man. Yeah, Renee actually is who turned me on. Renee Beavers is with us. Uh, he uh, he turned me on to the snare way, and it's 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 a good piece, bro. You did a nice you did a nice job on that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sure you're not touring right now. Usually he's out on tour. Um, anyway. Uh, please send me your questions over. We'll talk about whatever you'd like to talk about from here on. Uh, there was a couple more things I wanted to tell you about bass drum in particular. Uh, as I mentioned, until very recently, during quarantine, uh, I had never had anything in my bass drums. Again, I just tuned them to sound the way they, that I wanted them to sound. And I would have full front heads most of the time with no holes. Um, even, yes, in the studio, yes, live. Um, it was something that I, I like the way that sounds and feels. Uh, it, it creates a very specific sound, and I've always been a believer that you can take sound out easier than you can put sound in. So that was always my goal, make it so that engineers, producers have plenty of sound to work with. Well, recently I began to want a slightly more punchy, so hard to define sound with words, isn't it? 
I, I decided that I wanted to start using a different sounding bass drum. I wanted a, a kick drum that was a little more in your face. Boom! Just a more attack, frankly. Um, and I started experimenting with several things. Um, let me see if I can reach this back there. there. Uh, I tried this guy, the Remo Sub Muffle. Um, and it's, it, it almost worked. I, I like this piece quite a bit, actually. And on some drums, on my 20 inch, this is on there. I, I really like it quite a lot. Um, and what this is, you, may, you guys may or may not be hip to it, that's why I'm pulling it out. Effectively, it's a plastic tray that you put on the, uh, on the, yeah, okay. <laughs> you put it on the inside of your bass drum hip like this, and these are, these are individual foam pieces that you then line around the tray. And you can fit as many or as few of these in here as you want to get the amount of sound you're wanting. And here's how it works, right there. Uh, so this is a really interesting, nifty piece. I, again, I like it quite a lot. I use it on the 20 because I still don't want the 20 to be in any way damp past uh, a certain point. But it still wasn't quite working for me on, on either. I'll deal with that later. Um, it's, it wasn't working for me on my 22s, on either one of them. And um, I've lost a drumstick. So it wasn't necessarily working on the 22s for me. Um, I liked it on the on the Maple 22, but not so much this this Spruce 22. And uh, honestly, the 22-inch Spruce has so much tone, so much tone, that I wasn't I wasn't loving it initially. It really I even you know talked with my DW guys and we 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 discussed it and ways to handle it. And one day, it just occurred to me that I needed to change my tactic. So. Again, Renee, um, thanks Renee, I owe you gear, man. Uh, Renee hit me to this guy, here, to the sledge pad. I'm like that, I'm like. Um, so the sledge pad, I, when I first saw it, I thought, okay, it's just a piece of foam, what's the big deal? And then I, got, I reached out to Mike Vermillion over at sledge pad, and he sent me four or five of them, different sizes and whatnot, to try, and he's actually even built me a couple of, of specialty models, um, and I found myself really liking what this was doing to the bass drum. This one is the vented large for an 18 inch drum, 18 inch deep drum, uh, vented large as opposed to vented small. And of course, being me, I initially started with the vented small, um, and it just wasn't getting it done for me, because again, this spruce drum just has so much tone. I went this direction and thought, wow, okay, this is getting closer. Um, and I, I was really digging it and thought, okay, yeah, I understand it because it's still letting the tone of the drum happen, yet it was giving me some more of that punch. And then I talked to Mike over at Sledge Pad and I said, you know, could you do this thing for me? And he built me one that's, that's honestly, it's the only one in the world like it. Um, it's double thick on either side and it's got the vent. And it's, it's a couple of interesting things. And... Um, when I put it in the drum, I suddenly I went, there it is. That's what, that's what that drum needed. And before you write this off as just a piece of foam, it's really, really not. Even the density of the foam in different places uh, is different. And uh, Mike spent a lot of time and energy finding the right combination of, of ingredients to make this thing the perfect little piece. It's hinged, it's patented. Uh, so I really, I, I don't mean to sound like that guy uh, Mr. Endorser Man, but this is a good piece, and ultimately, this is the kick drum now, and it's coming through the sound of my EAD, so it's not like you're hearing it terribly uh, effective. Just sounds good. Uh, I'm really pleased with it. So the the, the uh, sledge pad has made a big difference for me, and again. It did not muffle the drum, it damped the drum. So that's the big thing here, is that you've got to search out your sound. Um, my friend Chad Austin, when I first posted that I was going to be doing this earlier, he's a big moon gel guy, and, and as I've said already, I hate him. Um, uh, but they do have their place. 
he, he'll throw them on everything, so Chad, you're still wrong. Um, me, I use them if I absolutely must or if I need something specific. And that's the trick here, isn't it? If you're looking for a specific sound, don't hesitate to try things. It's, it's your drum, man. Try it. You want to try cotton balls in the floor, Tom? Do it. It's been done. Do it. Want to put some makeup towels on there? Do it. Try different things to find the sound that you're looking for, you know? That's the whole idea. Um, oh, that's cool, Renee. I didn't know Doug had hipped you to things to that. That's really cool. Doug Tan is just a ridiculously good drummer and a good friend of, of mine and Renee's for that matter. Um, and he's, he's, uh, he's someone I study with when I get a chance. Uh, what are you saying? The, the articulate tone without being too dry or boomy. The kick drum, is that what you're talking about, Renee? Uh, if so, that's cool. Um, send, me your, send me your questions. Send me your questions. If you got more, let's have them. Um, because I think that's pretty much it. What have we learned today? Damping, not dampening. We're not dampening anything. We're not pouring water on our drums. We're damping the overtones. Be sure to remember that. Teach all your sound men that. Teach all your students that. Damping, not dampening. And damping is different from muffling, right? Cool, Renee, good. Uh, that's what I thought. Uh, so remember, damping gets rid of overtones. Muffling gets rid of volume. Dampening adds water. Okay? Does that make sense? Good, I'm glad. Um, this little trick, by the way, I know some of you have seen the big fat snare drum. This is the poor man's big fat, big fat snare drum. Just a, any old 14 inch head or whatever size your snare drum is. Upside down, on top of the head. And by the way, Douglas, by the way, be more uh, specific what you're asking me there. I want to know more specifically what you're asking. Um, just so I can answer it right. Uh, bottom heads. Please don't put anything on your bottom heads. It's like putting salt in coffee to keep it from being bitter. That's just wrong. Please don't put any muffling on your bottom heads. Please don't put any muffling on your bottom heads. Please don't put any muffling on your bottom heads. That's right. Don't put any damping on your bottom heads. No duct tape. No gaff tape. Please don't put anything on your bottom heads. Please. <laughs> How's that for a plea? Huh? Um, yeah, bottom heads need to be teased. And just since we're talking about that, all of this works in conjunction with tuning. Tuning well, and I did one of these a couple of weeks ago on tuning that will that will help you to get your tuning better. By the way, I can't believe I haven't said this. I have figured out figured out how to get all of these videos on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to start getting um, Douglas. 24 hours has passed. That might, you know, ask me again. Um. <laughs> um uh, see, I lost my train of thought. It's gone. What was I thinking? What was I saying? Somebody help me. What was I saying? Um, it's totally gone. Seriously. Tuning. Yes. Um, it's on the, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to have my YouTube channel starting to get more updated. I don't do much over there because I, 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 I don't know why, but I don't. So I'm going to start trying to put all of these videos on YouTube so that you can watch them again later at your leisure. Um, I'm going to attempt to make them at least somewhat indexed so you can skip through the things that don't matter, <laughs> skip through the things that you don't like. But uh, Buddy Gibbons over there on that. Um, ah, yes, okay, so Douglas has asked me a very, very specific question about making his marching snare drum quieter. I'm a marching band geek. Many of you know that, um, that I'm a, I'm a marching snare person. That's where my whole thing. Um, hey, thanks, Justin. Uh, you have any questions? Anybody else? Douglas, the trick with marching snares is that you need that formica top feel, that super, super reboundy Kevlar head, for a very specific purpose. That's, that's the style of playing and the head that you need for that, require, that's required for that. It just doesn't lend itself to muffling very well. And it, it's really tricky because there's not much you can do to make the sound of the head quiet. Why is that? Because a marching head made out of Kevlar is almost all attack anyway. So if you're trying to get rid of overtones, there aren't any. If you're trying to muffle the attack, that's exceptionally hard to do. Uh, and I'm gonna just demonstrate this one more time here. 
Um, and, and by the way, I wish I had picked up a brush. Brushes, multi rods, hot rods, drumsticks. While you can play quieter with brushes and such, you can also play loudly with them. And just because you put a pair of brushes in your hands does not necessarily mean that your volume is lower. It, it, you can play 110 decibels with a brush as easily as you can with a stick. And it's all about, about controlling it with your hands. So let me show you this one more time. Uh, we're going to take a look at the snare drum right here. Let me clear this out. All right. Um, yes, I'm ready. All right, so here we are. But here we go. Here is the readout on the snare drum with nothing on it. All right, so I averaged 109 with a max of 118.5. Okay. Now I'm going to. I'm gonna. How can I do this? I'm going to put. Um, I'm going to put make a foul and snare weight and snare weight and whole vat of moon gels or Remo crown gels. So th there, there should be no overtone in this drum at all. This should all be completely attacked, right? Let's see where we go, what we get here. <laughs> 104 is my average with a 118.5 max. It's almost exactly the same. So the point is the attack creates the volume. And when you're dealing with a marching snare, it's incredibly difficult to get rid of that. So. So if you're trying to, to practice on your marching snare, there, there are three things that I can think of that you can do. One, sit it on the floor so that the bottom head and the snares are doing nothing. Okay. It's, it's not great. You can put it on a pillow. You can put a, put a pillow on the stand, put the drum on the stand on the pillow, and that will get rid of the snare crispness. And that does help volume a little. Not much. Three, four, five dB. It's not much. Two, put a towel or something across the head, and then you've got a muffled situation. Trust me that I'm reading it. Um, so it's it's similar, it's it's similar in in volume even then. It's it is a little quieter, and it has no overtone, so that will help some. But the truth of the matter is, the best thing for a marching snare practice situation is to get a practice pad that's built for that, like that Zymox that I'm looking at sitting right over there. Um, I, I really like my Zymox for marching percussion stuff. Hey, Miss Judy, that's my other mama. Um, you're up late. You should go to bed. Um, that Zymox pad is built just for this purpose, and you could put it on top of your drum so that you actually have the drum in front of you, and you're feeling like you're playing the drum even though you're not. That would be my personal suggestion, because there's just no other way to get a marching snare to respond the way that you want it to. It, it's a different beast than all of this. So, so it, it creates a very diff difficult thing. Uh, so, sorry if that's not the answer you wanted, but that's kind of where it is. Charles Anderson from South Africa. What are you doing? Remo Ambassador Coated versus Remo Emperor Coated on a 5.1 millimeter shell. Does it help with lessening the stain? Sustain. Okay, so that's a good question. Um, thank you for a good question. Ambassadors are single ply, whether they're coated or clear. Or smooth white. By the way, don't sleep on the smooth white heads. Those are really good. My bass drum is a smooth white. It's a different film, and it sounds and feels really, really nice to play on. By the way, uh, and in fact, Remo provides smooth white emperors for factory DW. The new factory heads, new factory heads for DW, are are smooth white emperors, and they sound really good. Um, an emperor is two ply, an ambassador is one ply. So, what does that mean? The um, the Vic Perth stock pad, Douglas. I'll come back to that in a second, Charles. Um, the Vic Perth stock pad is not the same thing. It is a gum rubber pad, and that's not what we want. We want to have a pad like the Zymox, 
or, or there, were, there are two or three others, I think I even sent you a link to them, uh, that are actually very much like playing on a Kevlar head. So check on that. Uh, I don't know the, I guess I don't know the, that particular paper tab, but I'll take a look at it. Uh, back to the ambassador emperor thing, Charles. Um, an emperor head is two ply of seven and a half mil or seven mil uh, film. So what that ultimately means, this is, an, this is a diplomat. You tell it's thin, right? This is seven mil. Okay, two plies of seven mil is pretty durable. One ply, not as much. This is this is more commonly used as a bottom head on top, uh, or for concert percussion. Two plies of this is pretty serious because suddenly you've got 14 mils of head, and the two plies work together in conjunction, and that is an emperor. So the two plies, in a perfect world, where there's vacuum sealed and there's absolutely no air in between the two plies. Um, and Remo does a pretty good job of it, but it's, it's next to impossible to get all of the air out. But in a perfect world, the two plies would, would flex completely in unison with each other, and it would be ultimately like having a really thick one-ply head. Well, because that's not the case, because there's always a smidge of air, no matter how good the processes are, um, they don't quite work in perfect harmony. So what you end up with is a slightly deader head, slightly. It's not a massive difference. When I play the two heads side by side, and in fact, I, I mean, I've sat with this this kit in particular. I sat with, uh, I think I've used every head that Remo makes, just about, uh, to try to find the right combination. And what I have found, for my ears, is that a coated ambassador is a has a little more attack, a little more grip, and a lot more sustain, a lot more sustain. And I like that. An ambassador is not quite as durable because it's single ply 10 mil, 10 mil, but I don't hit hard enough for that to matter. Uh, I don't go through, I don't go through heads because I'm, I beat holes in them or anything. I go through heads because I wear them out. Um, or that, you know, that happens after a while. Emperors I like, and I find myself kind of back and forth on emperors. Uh, on this particular kit, I like the vintage emperor, which is even slightly thicker. That's what's on this head, this drum 16. Um, so the, the lessening the sustain is what all of this is about. That's what, what damping a drum is about, is lessening the sustain, getting rid of some of the overtone. Um, because the second that you put, well, let's just take a, let's do an experiment. Even the head by itself sitting here has less sustain, right? As soon as I put this on it. And it will be greatly affected by the position. The closer to the center I get, the better it gets. Of course, it gets impractical at some point. For me, Charles, I like sustain. I like long tones. Um, I, I want my drums to, to sing out. I want everything to go. sound huge. I, I like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with you wanting less sustain if that's if that's your bag. Um, so I'm gonna put these rainbow crowns back on here. Yes, having the thicker head just to make it simpler and quicker will make it sustain less, so you'd want an emperor. It's just a shorter sound, you know, and uh, for me, one thing that we didn't cover is that the audience hears a very different drum set than the player hears. Very, very, very different. Um, from a player perspective, it might be ringing like crazy, but once you're two or three feet in front of it, that stuff is just gone to the point that you don't hear all of the ring. What you hear is a nice, pure tone. And I, I would challenge you to take all the muffling and all the damping off your drums, have someone else play them, and you stand 10 feet in front of it. And I think you would be amazed. That was what happened to me.
you know, when I first started playing, I'd line the shells on the inside with foam. I put foam all the way around the whole shell. And one day, my brother, actually, my stepbrother, was like, hey, uh, why you got them so dead, man? <laughs> well, I don't know. It sounds good to me. Take that stuff out of there. And I did, and I hated it. And he sat down and played, because he was a pretty good drummer back in the day, and he sat down and he played, and I walked out front and was blown away. And suddenly it made sense to me. So I would suggest you give that a shot. Um, just so you can hear it, Charles, this is a 16-inch, as I said, vintage emperor. A slightly um, shorter sound and slightly out of tune. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that'll be fixed quickly. So I'm going to put it next to this 14. But this 14 is a, is a coated ambassador. So that's a pretty good just pretty good difference. To my ears, the, the Emperor is a, is a little shorter and, than I want it to be. Uh, I, like I said, I used the Emperor for something specific recently. And um, that's, that's what you have to decide is what you're looking for for your project on, in your situation. I hope that helps. Uh, Rene, is it still the Max or the Marching Percussion measurement? Yes, um, that's that's right. On my resonant front of the bass drum out there, I use a Marching Percussion White Max or or the Max series heads. Typically, they, I do custom graphic ones. Uh, this particular one, actually, at the moment, is a Black Max. Go figure. Um, uh, Power Max is that what they're called? Yeah. Um, it's not Black Max. It's Power Max, but mine is the one that's out there is is black. Uh, why do I use a marching percussion head? I, because of uh, the fact that it's got a felt muffling ring built into it. How about that? So um, the felt ring, and I use the word muffling when actually it's a damping ring, but a felt ring built all the way around the peripheral, the, around the circumference rather, of the head, and I can manipulate it, I can pull some of it out and leave some of it in. That way I don't have to put anything on the front head, I don't have to, to, to kill it with a pillow or anything of that nature. It just gives me a nice solid thud, and that's what I'm looking for out of a kick drum. Especially when I put the, the hole in the drum head, that changed everything. Uh, so having that power, power max, power max head on the on the outside there, really changed things. And again, having the marching head plus this smooth white, we call it the mini head, smooth white power stroke three with a giant white dot um, on the batter side here, created a really nice kick drum. All right, gang, I think that's about it for tonight. I'm going to uh, actually sit down and do a little playing for a while. Uh, I think I am anyway. I don't know. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we will be back here Thursday night is my current plan. Be here Thursday. I'm going to try to start doing Mondays and Thursdays, Mondays and Thursdays. Um, this Thursday we'll be discussing dynamics and playing with dynamics. Um, so yeah, we'll be we'll be talking about that. Uh, drummers get a bad rap for playing loud all the time, and that is just not us, is it? So uh, hit me up if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, suggestions. I will be here. I'm easy to find. Hit me up. I'm always around. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>